It was full steam ahead on the island of Sodor. All the engines were running on time. They wanted to finish their work quickly, because tonight was Halloween. The engines love seeing the children in their Halloween costumes. And the engines love to hear tales of ghostly engines and scary steam trains. That evening, the Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas and Emily, you must go to the smelter's yard, he said. An important delivery of iron must be collected right away. Yes, sir, they puffed. Percy thought the smelter's yard was spooky. He was worried about his friends. Look out for ghosts, he whistled nervously. It is Halloween. There's no such thing as ghosts, Thomas said cheerfully. It's just silly make-believe, added Emily. And they steamed off to the smelter's yard. The sun was setting and it was getting dark. Imagine being scared of Halloween, puffed Thomas. Oh, the smelter's yard, sniffed Emily. Pa, added Thomas. Thomas and Emily enjoyed feeling brave. But when they got to the smelter's yard, it was very spooky. Oh my, whispered Emily. Oh dear, hissed Thomas. They puffed slowly through the piles of jagged steel and twisted scrap. The air grew hotter and smoke grew thicker. Harry and Bert were lurking nearby. The two diesels saw the chance to scare a couple of steamies. When Thomas and Emily rolled by, they moaned and groaned. It sounded spooky. What was that? snapped Emily. You said there was no such thing as ghosts. Silly make-believe, you said, gasped Thomas. Suddenly, a truck began to shudder and shake. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Help, wailed Emily. That's a ghost. Let's get away from here. They didn't know Harry and Bert had been bumping the flatbed's buffers. The two naughty diesels were having great fun. Thomas and Emily pulled up to the smelting shed. They gasped at the ghostly shadows and fizzing sparks. Their wheels felt as if they were frozen, but they had to go inside. I hope the ghost hasn't gone in there, quaked Thomas. Me too, quivered Emily. And they both rolled slowly into the smelting shed. Inside, chains clanked and strange shadows danced across the walls. Must be brave, must be brave, Thomas puffed. But it was spooky. Emily was turning round ready to shunt some trucks. A great whoosh of sparks lit up the shed. Bust my buffers, cried Emily. Emily was scared. She didn't notice the huge white tarpaulin. It fell, covering her from funnel to footplate. The ghost, it's got me. She steamed away as fast as her pistons could pump. Thomas thought Emily was the ghost, and he raced out of the smelting shed. The ghost is after me, cried Thomas. Harry and Bert thought Emily was the ghost too, and they raced away. Thomas was right behind them, and Emily was right behind Thomas. The ghost has got me. Harry, Bert, Thomas and Emily raced towards Tidmouth Sheds. 
Tidmouth's sheds was quiet and peaceful. All the engines were fast asleep. Thomas's whistle soon woke them up. It's Thomas, cried Percy. Something must be wrong. Suddenly he saw Thomas, Harry and Bert racing into the yards. Stop, he cried. Harry, Bert and Thomas applied their brakes. They stopped just in time. The ghost is after us, whistled Thomas. Percy was scared, but just then Emily raced under a signal and the tarpaulin flew off. That's no ghost, said Percy. That's Emily. The engines didn't feel scared anymore, but they did feel foolish. The fat controller arrived wearing his pyjamas. What is all this fuss and bother, he boomed. This has caused confusion and delay. But, sir, cried Thomas, the flatbeds were rattling. And we heard moaning, said Emily. And groaning, added Thomas. The fat controller looked at Harry and Bert. Do you know anything about this? he asked sternly. It was us, sir, Bert mumbled. For your punishment, you will go back and collect the iron at once, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, said Harry and Bert, and they rumbled away. Whenever Thomas and Emily went back to the smelter's yard, they knew there was nothing to be scared of. After all, there is no such thing as ghosts. It was all silly make-believe. The engines on the island of Sodor look forward to Halloween. They love the Fat Controller's fireworks and the children dressing up as wizards and witches. They also love Edward's spooky stories. They say that on Halloween, the ghost engine returns to the smelters looking for his lost woo -woo whistle. Ooh, ah, spooky, the engine said, all shivering a little. Later, the fat controller arrived. Thomas, Percy and Jock, I have a special job for you, he said. You are to collect some scrap from the smelter's yard tonight. On Halloween? Don't worry, you will be back in time for the fireworks. Percy isn't worried about missing the fireworks, teased Thomas. He's a scaredy engine. I am not, called Percy, but he was a little. At the smelters, all Percy could think about was Edward's ghost engine. Thomas knew Percy was scared, so he teased him even more. What's that up there? Thomas squeaked. Is it a spook? It's just a piece of twisted scrap, Percy said nervously. Isn't it? Thomas was having fun. He kept on teasing Percy. Careful the ghost engine doesn't get you, Thomas said. There's no such thing as ghost, snapped Percy. Duck felt sorry for Percy. Nobody's brave all the time, said Duck. But I'm not a scaredy engine, Percy insisted. The job was nearly complete. Well done, the yard manager said. Now I'll need one engine to finish up. Duck wanted to pay Thomas back for all his teasing. Please, sir, he said. I'm sure Thomas wouldn't mind staying. Of course not, Thomas boasted. I'm not a scaredy engine. So Duck and Percy left. When Thomas was by himself, every sound and every shadow was spooky. He was beginning to feel very scared. There's no such things as ghosts, he said nervously. Who's there? Thomas was so busy looking for ghosts, he didn't watch where he was going. The chains felt like ghost fingers. Something's got me! Thomas wished and set off an old steam whistle. The ghost whistle!
Russell, said Thomas, and he raced away as fast as his wheels could carry him. The ghost engine is after me! It was naughty of Thomas to tease you, Percy, said Duck. He was only playing, said Percy. I hope he hurries up. I wouldn't want him to be late for the fireworks. He's after me! I don't think he'll be late, said Duck. Duck and Percy joined the other engines for the fireworks. Where's Thomas? Percy asked. He'll miss all the fun. It would serve him right after all his teasing, Duck said. But Percy was worried. He went to look for his friend. He found Thomas all alone in the shed. Are you all right, Thomas? He said. Yes, I'm sorry I teased you, Percy, Thomas said. Duck was right. We all feel scared sometimes. And we all have to say sorry sometimes, said his friend. So come on, Thomas. We can watch the fireworks just as well from here. And he was right. Flower Power. It was Halloween night on the island of Sodor. The moon shone brightly and the stars twinkled in the night sky. The children's Halloween party was over, but while the children slept, all the engines were kept very busy. Thomas was alone at Tidmouth Sheds when the Fat Controller arrived. He was still in his Halloween costume. You are to collect flour from the mill and take it to the bakery, he boomed. You must work with diesel. The island needs its morning toast and Lady Hat and I need our crumpets, he added sternly. So I'll have no mishaps tonight. Thomas didn't want to work with diesel but he wanted to be really useful. When Thomas arrived at Brendan, he couldn't see Diesel at all. Diesel was up to his old tricks. He rolled up behind Thomas and went, Boo! Trust the silly old Steamy to be scaredy on Halloween. Diesel sneered. I'm not a scurdy engine, said Thomas firmly. We'll see, oil Diesel. Thomas and Diesel headed for the flower. Diesel teased Thomas with every click and every clack. When they arrived at the woods, Diesel cried, It's the haunted forest! And he called out, Woo! Thomas! In a spooky voice. Stop it! said Thomas crossly. But the breeze blew and the branches creaked. Diesel's teasing made it seem spooky indeed. Then they came to the abandoned mine. The buildings were deserted but they could hear a banging noise. What was that? cried Thomas. Sounds like the ghost engine looking for a steamy to scare. Well, I'm not scared, said Thomas, but he wished he felt as brave as he sounded. Thomas and Diesel had to stop at a red signal. It was next to a twisty old tree. The wind whistled and Thomas heard a strange cry. Suddenly Thomas felt something touch his tender. Look out, cried Diesel. The ghost engine is after your funnel. Cinders and ashes, gasped Thomas. And he let out a frightened peep. Scare the engine, scare the engine, Diesel teased. Thomas was very cross with Diesel. 
He wanted to pay him back for all his teasing. Thomas and Diesel arrived at the flower mill. Thomas rolled up to collect the flower. Then Thomas had an idea. We'll see who's a scaredy engine, he puffed. Thomas biffed the trucks out of the way and rolled under the chute himself. When Thomas puffed out the other side, he was covered from dome to buffer in pure white flour. Ooh, he said spookily. It's the ghost engine, cried Diesel. It's come to get me. Stop, cried Thomas. It's just me. But Diesel was nowhere to be seen. After Diesel was gone, the mill seemed very quiet. But there was still work to do. The island needs its bread, thought Thomas, and the fat controller needs his crumpets. Thomas shunted all the trucks into one long line and he set off for the bakery all alone. As Thomas arrived at the twisty tree, he wished he could go faster. But it was a very long train and he had to go slowly. Because he was going so slowly, Thomas could see that the tree wasn't spooky at all. It was just a tree, he gasped, and the strange cry was an owl. Thomas was relieved. Thomas chugged towards the abandoned mine. He could still hear the spooky banging. He looked to his left and then to his right, and he saw what was making the noise. It's just an old door, he gasped. The wind is making it crash. Finally, Thomas reached the old woods. The breeze still blew and the branches creaked. Thomas took a big, brave puff. But without Diesel's teasing, Thomas could see the haunted forest was actually Henry's favorite forest. It's not scary at all, said Thomas. Thomas arrived at the bakery. He was tired but happy. It's the ghost engine, sir, Diesel told the fat controller, and it's come to get me. It's not a ghost engine, boomed the fat controller. That's Thomas. He's a really useful engine. Thomas, you have done a splendid job, the fat controller said. You deserve a special washdown. Thank you, sir, puffed Thomas proudly. And while the fat controller waited for the first batch of crumpets, Thomas looked forward to telling his friends his diesel Halloween story. He liked running at night. The rails hummed and the signal lights shone green. But a broken cartload of lime lay ahead. Sam the farmer had just gone for help. Percy broke the car to smithereens. Lime flew everywhere. He puffed quickly to the nearest signal box. Percy's driver explained what had happened. I'll see to it, said the signalman, but you'd better clean Percy or people will think he's a ghost. Percy chuckled. Do let's pretend I'm a ghost and scare Thomas. That'll teach him to say I'm a silly little engine. Toby promised to help. Thomas was being oiled up for his evening train. Percy's had an accident, cried Toby. Poor engine, said Thomas. Botheration! That means I'll be late. They've cleared the line for you, but there's something worse. Out with it, Toby. I can't wait all evening. I've just seen something, said Toby. It looked like Percy's ghost. 
It said it was was coming here to, to, to warn us. Huh. Who cares? Don't be frightened, Toby. I'll take care of you. Percy, no, no, not by the smoke of my chimney, chim, chim. I'll chuff and I'll puff and I'll break your door in. Oh, dear, exclaimed Thomas. It's getting late. Oh, I'd no idea. Oh, I must find Annie and Clarabel. It was morning when Thomas returned. Where have you been? asked Toby. Ah, well, said Thomas. I knew you'd be sad about Percy, and I, uh, I didn't like to intrude. I slept in the good shed, and... Oh, sorry, can't stop. Got to see a coach about a train. It was a moonlit night, and Henry was working with Edward. The big green engine was taking a goods train to the station by the lake. Whenever that owl hoots, a mist rolls in, murmured Edward. There's a legend that when the mist's about, there's a ghost about, too. Take care on the old line, Henry. Stupid bird, said Henry. Owls, mists, ghosts. Edward's going soft in the boiler. There's no mist. But Henry was wrong. What's that? cried Henry. It's an amber lamp, murmured his driver. That means proceed with caution. Who's there? No one replied. Henry crept slowly forward. He stopped by a tree. It had a sign nailed to it, beware of the viaduct. The driver was surprised. No one warned us about that before, and look, the signal's red, and the gates are closed. Ah, 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 and there's a fogman's coat. But where's its owner? Then they saw a light move within the station building. G -g -g ghosts exclaimed Henry. Edward was right. Something very strange is happening, said his driver. I think it's best we go back. So do I, agreed Henry. By morning, the mist had cleared. A workman was talking about the unsafe viaduct. Lucky you didn't cross it last night. Yes, but we don't know who warned us, replied Henry's driver. Later that day, he spoke to Henry. The viaduct has been repaired. We can take our train back along the old line tonight. Henry didn't really want to. But when nightfall came, he was sizzling nicely. Suddenly, an owl hooted, and then Gordon thundered by. Oh, look, Henry's spooked, said a truck, and the others giggled in their silly way. Be quiet, snapped Henry. I'm not scared. But he was. A little later, the fog came down. As they approached the same area, they saw the amber light again. Here we go, said Henry's driver. Then, unbeknown to Henry, the gates mysteriously closed by themselves, and the signal went red. The trucks had seen all, and they were spooked too. Faster, faster, there's a ghost about. Stop! Stop! yelled Henry. A mysterious figure watched Henry go by. Ahead was a landslide blocking the line. Henry braked hard, but the trucks hit some of the rubble and plunged into the ravine. Just then, Henry's driver saw a strange sight coming towards him. 
What's that? He said. The fireman laughed. That's our ghost. It's old Bailey the fogman. Old Bailey was very cross. I tried to warn you about that, Viaduct. Why didn't you pay attention? We're sorry we ignored your warnings, replied the driver. Is there anything we can do to thank you? I'd like to operate that old station again, if you let me. I promise I won't spook Henry. And in a little while, Old Bailey's wish was granted. You and your station will be really useful, said the Fat Controller. Let's hear a hearty thank you to the friendliest, er, uh, ghost on the island. Everyone cheered, especially Henry, who was the happiest of all. <laughs>